This is DJ MC here in the booth with Illa J and my man. DJ White Boy, please. That's right. And uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, Illa J's new album that was just released called The Yancey Boys. And it's, uh, it's incredibly dope. Can I just first say that? It's clearly... It's 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 a, it's a great album. Uh, so definitely commend you on that. It's 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 totally chill and right up my alley. It's uh, it's out now on Delicious Vinyl. Yep, Delicious Vinyl, dope. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's a lot to talk about with this. Uh, I'm sure you've been getting. We sort of actually did a little quick overview of other interviews you've done uh, recently, and uh, they're pretty. Uh, J Dilla centric, meaning that they're 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 doing they have a lot to do with J Dilla, which of course he was he was a favorite of ours uh, here at WHRB and clearly a lot of other college radio stations and other radio stations around the world. Um, but uh, so we first definitely want to start out though with your perspective on this project as a whole, how it came together. Uh, just uh, describe it a little bit for the listeners who might not know uh, where you're coming from. Like, what's your history been with? playing music and I know you come from a very musical family and it's reflected on the album and like sure. when did you first get involved in like making music and um I, I pretty much like well like, I always I, I was pretty much surrounded by music like just growing up um you know my household my 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 brother of course he down there you know all you, all you hear is the bass from him making uh, beats all day um my sister she in our room writing then my my dad um, and my mom they had a a little acapella jazz group. They would be like rehearsing like six hours during the day. So it's like <laughs> like all all that surrounded me, and plus being from Detroit, where it's you know it's a lot of music there too. And at a young age, like I said, I always knew I would do it. I just didn't know when. And um, after my brother, after the loss of my brother, pretty much like you know in a sense like. Uh, um, experiences like those like give you a whole new perspective in a sense on life, and uh, I pretty much just like I dedicate my life to pretty much just the music. Like, I was like, okay, I gotta you know use my gift now, like for real. So that's pretty much how like I always knew I would do it. But after my brother passed, that's when I you know really you know knew I would definitely uh, be doing music. Now, in another interview, you talked about how uh, when you first realized just how big Dilla was as a producer and like how influential he was, was kind of when you were seeing videos and songs off of Lab Cab in California performed on MTV. And now for your album, you got to like use the beats from that period. How does it feel revisiting your brother's uh, beats from uh, like that time? Uh, that's definitely um, exciting. Like uh, that's crazy that you said that because like uh, that. When I first, we pretty much, when we first decided to do the album with Delicious, you know, that kind of hit me. Like, I'm like, dang, like, I'm tra like I, w I remember I was nine years old, like, when the drop video was out, like, back in 95. And I'm, I'm on the couch watching it, geek that my brother did it. And it's crazy to be actually doing some tracks that he was making during that time. Like, like not knowing while I'm sitting on the couch, my brother out here making some tracks that I'm going to do an album to, like, 13 years later. But, you know, I, I had no idea. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy how everything came full circle it because um, Delicious Vinyl, in a sense, was uh, an outlet for my brother um, in the beginning of his career. So for me to start off there is kind of uh, dope. That is, that, that's pretty awesome. So uh, you're, you're a young cat. You are uh, it's just sort of getting into this. Uh, what, what were you up to before all this came to pass where you had this opportunity and stuff? What was going on in LJ's life leading up uh, to this album? Uh, pretty much before that, I was just um, recording songs. I... Cause uh, what happened was uh, summer of '07. I um, I went I went back to Detroit just to get all the uh, studio equipment, and uh, we made uh, put a studio in our crib. And um, uh, you know, I named it Yancey Boy Studios, and it's just kind of like uh, in a tribute to my brother or whatever. But uh, uh, pretty much once I got studio equipment, I just start pretty much just um uh, practicing and getting in the booth and just experiment, messing with all different types of sounds and stuff like that. Cause like um. Uh, it, one one thing um, is it's like it's 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 a different thing in uh, writing a song and actually uh, getting it in the booth and recording it. And once I, in a sense, start to uh, grasp the the art of recording, then that's when I start to uh, really get better and better. Because when you first start recording, at first you just be excited to hear yourself record it. So you know what I mean. Yeah. And then the more you get into it, you get more technical into the you know as far as in the craft or whatever. But um, pretty much I was just recording a song after song. Um, I actually um. Work with a uh, focus, uh, battle cat. Some I was I was working with other producers at the time, just 
experiment with different um, sounds, trying to find my, in a sense, find my sound or whatever. But uh, and then this, in a sense, like this album just came out of nowhere. It was like it kind of caught me off guard because I like at first I didn't expect to do an album with delicious, delicious vinyl. So for him to uh, for him to um, like actually do an album with me is like, like I'm, I'm excited about it. I feel like in a sense, like I made the NBA and I. Um, when uh, I'm on the same team as my brother kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're more than a triple threat because you rap and you also sing and you also produce and you record everything, like kind of do everything yourself. And how does that, how is it different when you work with like other producers or other artists? How does your approach to like making an album differ from theirs when you're like in the creative process? Um, I'm trying to see, well, well one thing like with, with this album, like when I, um, every everybody um, that uh, I, I collab with, um, it's almost like I, I just felt like they they were probably the per, the perfect people to pick for the tracks because um like w- one thing like as an artist when I was as coming out like, I didn't want it to necessarily have like um like a whole bunch of features you know what I mean because it's my first album so you yeah, I want people to get you know get in touch with me as an artist in a sense because in this album it's pretty much my brother's the music and then I'm the voice and I'm the new voice that he's introducing to the world in a sense almost kind of like that and um. Like when I when I collab with people, especially my boy Atheon, like we gotta like that's my, like yeah. that's like my boy. So we just like bang out joints just to you know just to record, just to write and uh, get each other better at writing. And um, when when that joint came along, I pretty much I had two verses on it. And uh, like I, I was uh, uh, having I had him come over to listen to some of the joints I did on the album already. This was like uh, early this year, and uh, I was just playing them for him. And I was playing this one joint. And I was like, hold up, I was like, dang, you might. I'm like, you want to do a verse on this joint? And uh, he was like, he was like, heck yeah! So uh, the engineer just happened to be on his way, so he just uh, wrote his verse real quick in like ten, fifteen minutes, and uh, and then he just uh, put that verse on there. And after he did the verse, I'm like, man, you in the zone? Like, why don't you just uh, just do the hook too? Like, skip it, you know? Because yeah. I'm like, in a sense, I'm kind of like a point guard. I don't, I don't mind passing off to him if he gonna hit the three, kind of thing. Like, yes. <laughs> like as far as like when I'm collabing with people, like with Debbie Nova. I just kind of let her come in there and just do her thing in a sense because I mean that's the best way to do it in a sense because yeah. like you you get the the be- the best of the artists if you just let them just free in a sense or sometimes like I, I, mean, I did want to ask about Avion's appearance on the album I I thought all of the the features on it were really cool and there were a few features but they're all really great and guilty simpson also uh, another harvard radio favorite especially with atheon i had i had seen like his mr carter video and then i i saw this album come out and i heard him on that that's really cool that you involved him on it just wondering oh, what sure. thought went into he's pretty funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but uh yeah what, what 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 what's up with those what do you think about guilty simpson um, and also, why don't you tell us a little bit about your connection with Atheon and how that sort of came about? Uh, well, uh, well, pretty much, well, like, I, I start with Atheon, I go to Guild. Like, uh, like, what's crazy, how I met Atheon, um, it's actually, this, uh, this coming up, um, Saturday, it's like we have, like, a, um, cause, like, you know, my brother, like, he died from complications of, you know, lupus or whatever. So they, uh, like, we had this, um, we have lupus walks every year and stuff like that. And, um, we actually got one this Saturday coming up. But um uh yeah we pretty much um like I, I met him at uh one of one of the uh like it was a, a lupus walk and then uh like my boy uh, Dave New York introduced me to him like yo uh, this is a good dude like you know so we we linked up there and pretty much it was like yo uh you know I got a studio so he like like okay yo that's man got some joints and pretty much that's you know that's how we kind of met up and stuff and uh yeah like he you know mad he a mad cool dude and uh we pretty much. Like uh, like I said, like, I was just I was just letting them come hear some joints. I I didn't even know I was gonna end up putting them on the album. And um, I was just listening to the joint with my two verses on it, and I was like, dang, his voice is sound good on there because uh, we had did other songs together. So like I know how uh, in a sense how our voice sound together on the, on the same track. So like that's pretty much how I put them on there. And then um, uh, guilty uh, uh, as far as guilt, like I don't know, like that's that's that's, that's one of my favorite um, MCs because like as soon as he uh. Uh, rap on the track like his presence is immediately felt because it's almost like as soon as his voice comes in there he auto- he automatically grabs your attention.